Hi once again. What we have done and what we will be doing, we have been examining the second order circuits. We said what it is and we said uh, how we, uh, we explained how we can find out the mathematical model which is called state equation for a second order circuit. Our example circuit was that parallel RLC circuit and the corresponding uh, mathematical model is this uh, ordinary differential equation which is called the state equation. So the next step is how we are going to calculate how we are going to solve this differential equation. So in the differential equation course we have seen the mathematical solution. That solution has got two parts, one of them the homogeneous solution, the other one is the particular solution. We examined how these solutions will be calculated already. Now we are saying we are going to examine the general solution. We need to do an additional examination for the general solution. Why is that? Because we know the general solution is the summation of the homogeneous solution and the particular solution. So in our case, it is this, isn't it? So that part is the homogeneous solution and it is also called transient solution, I will explain later on. And the particular solution, that is the steady solution we call it. Um, the summation of those two, this is the general solution. If you look at this general solution now, it has got four parameters, k parameters here, uh, not being calculated yet. So these are known, so okay, particular solution is uh, known. And these S1 and S2 parameters have already been calculated. These are the characteristic roots. So we know the characteristic roots, S1 and S2. So we don't know this case. So there are four Ks here, meaning since this is a general solution, when you replace or substitute these variable in this differential equation here, you substitute this solution in substitute this solution uh, functions for this differential equation left hand side become equal becomes equal to the right hand side since it is a solution whatever the k values are it is true so you might say that infinite number of solutions that is available at the moment which is which one of those is the hours solution? The answer is it depends on your circuit initial conditions. We are going to calculate these k values by using the initial conditions which are the capacitor initial uh, condition V0 that means capacitor voltage value when t equal to 0 and inductor current value when t equal to 0 that is I0 and V0. So by using these initial conditions, we will be calculating the case here. But we've got two initial conditions, but we've got two unknowns in this general solution. What we are going to do? What we have done, I explained a bit in the previous video, in differential equation course. These are eigenvectors vectors. These eigenvectors, these entities, depends on to each other. Why is that? Because the determinant of SI minus I matrix, A matrix, so this matrix determined equal to zero. In, uh, under this condition, we have found the uh, characteristic roots. Since this determined equals to zero, then our equations, linear equations, becomes linearly dependent. When it is linearly dependent, so you can calculate one of the entity in terms of the other. So instead of these two, you're going to have just one unknown. Instead of or these two, you're going to have just one unknown. By using the initial condition, you can calculate this. In mathematics, you have done it. So what we are going to do in circuits, we are going to introduce you a new tool for calculating the case 
by using the physical structure of our circuit. How we are going to use it is easy. So if you, put, if you replace t's here, this becomes v0 and this becomes i0. t0 means this disappears, this disappears. In here, you're going to have two equations for unknowns. So we need another two equations. So we need another two knowns to be able to write those. How are we going to do it? Easy. So this is our differential equation. So if you replace t with 0 here, this becomes initial conditions. This column matrix becomes initial conditions, which is given. We know that. And this particular solution is known. Uh, this uh, independent uh, current source current is known. This parameter is known. This parameter is known. That means when, the, when you replace t with 0, right hand side is known. So if you replace t with 0 on the left hand side, that means you can calculate our state variables differentiations initial condition. So this is done here, you see. Here you are. When you replace t with 0, the left hand side becomes this. And this becomes the initial conditions which is given to you. So right hand says is known. That means this 2 is also known. What is this 2? Derivative of the state variables when t equal to 0, that is the value. So that means you can calculate those two. So how are you going to use that information is easy. So that is the general solution. If you, if you take the derivative of this left hand side and right hand side, you're going to get another two equation. In this equation, if you replace t with 0, left hand side you're going to find this, which has already been calculated. Then, altogether, there's, there are four unknowns and four equations, so you can calculate all these parameters by using these four equations. You might think that it is going to be difficult because to calculate the four unknowns from the four equations but it's not going to be like that. It's going to be two unknowns, two equations. So it's going to be, it's not going to be that complex. How are you going to see it? So we have examined in general analysis of a, a parallel RLC circuit. There is no numerical values here. These are all parametric solutions that we are doing here. When we do the numerical solutions that you're going to see, the number of equations that you're going to solve is going to be two equations, two unknown. You're going to end up here. So you, you will see it for the next videos. Uh, so that is the uh, end of this. Maybe I need to calculate that what this red arrow here. So how we came to the general solution, we found the homogeneous solution. In that homogeneous solution, we calculated characteristic roots. These are the two parameters that we needed to calculate it. We have done the, this calculation. But after that, we have introduced four unknowns in our homogeneous solution here. We said we are going to calculate these parameters later on by using the initial conditions. Now this is the later on. So that means you're going to calculate the homogeneous solution and then the particular solution you're going to add those two, general solution and particular solution, and then you're going to calculate these k values. That red arrow tells you now it is time to calculate the k parameters. That's why I put that arrow here. Another way of saying it, don't calculate the k values at the end of the homogeneous solution. You've got to do it after the particular solution because the particular solution affects the values of these k values. Okay, so let's end of this and stop recording.